from Los Angeles, California, the Glow original, the one, the only, Hollywood. Rock and roll is what I do. If you were me, then you would too. If you want those presents, naughty or nice, Santa is watching, so you better think twice. Hi, Kitty. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Mike Rand Show and today's special guest for our Christmas episode is from GLOW, the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Please welcome back Hollywood. Hey Hollywood, how are you? I'm good, Mike. How are you today? Good. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you and yours. I'm so excited for today's show. We're going to have a great time, everybody. And this year we have a special correspondent joining us. Um, do you have any idea who it is? Let, I don't know. Let's check and see who is our special correspondent for this year. Hey, Mike. Hey, Hollywood. It's me, Lightning. Gorgeous ladies of wrestling. I'm here to help you with those special guests. So sit tight. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay. Thanks for that update. And we'll be checking in with you soon. And now, Hollywood, you've had a great year. And one of the things that happened is you were contacted from the producers and people that made the video game Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. So can you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. So in 1993, Mike, I did a video game called Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. Um, about two years ago, uh, Limited Run Games got a hold of me and they asked if I would be willing to do some voiceovers for it and uh, re- uh, do the opening. And I said, yes, um, I will do that. So we'll be filming that shortly in the next week or two, which will be kind of cool. And if you do go to YouTube and type in plumbers don't wear ties, you will see that it has over 8.9 million views. So you could see why they decided to redo this game and re-release it. I mean, that's more than more views than Glow gets, to be honest with you. <laughs> so for those who don't know, I am Jane. I played the character Jane in Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. So I'm looking forward to um, to shooting with the, those guys. Thanks for bringing that up, Mike. Yeah. And then let's not forget, too, you also did a little um, sponsorship with the CBD cream, correct? Oh, yeah. The, the ointment is called Aces Joint Repair. And um, Ryan is in a band, a couple of bands, but um, he's good friends with Chuck Garrick. Chuck Garrick is the bass player for um, Alice Cooper. And he asked me if I would be the ambassador for Aces Joint Repair. And let me tell you, anybody who's a wrestler or does what we do can use this CBD ointment. And it's so funny because it was literally on my dresser and I had been using it the whole time before Chuck even told me about being an ambassador. I go, you mean this stuff that's right here? He had given it to Ryan and Ryan gave it to me. So it was just kind of funny how that worked out. And, and, for anybody who doesn't know, Ryan Cook, um, it has been in, he's playing actually right now as we speak with the um, Ace Freely band and with the Gene Simmons solo band. So um, I'm a huge fan of KISS. And when I met Ryan 20 years ago in Los Angeles, I remember uh, we were talking about our favorite music and I was telling him that I was a huge KISS fan, not knowing that Ryan was a huge KISS fan. Um, and I could name every song on Kiss Alive 2. I remember getting that in seventh grade. But the funny thing is, how ironic, he's been a fan since he was a little boy, that he could be able to play with the peers that he grew up with, watching Gene and Ace perform. So for him, he's honored and he's grateful to be um, playing with those great bands today. And I'm happy because I get to go and watch which is awesome. Yep. And, and <laughs> see, sometimes a being a fan, you know, then you have the benefit later on in life. Look at me and you. Absolutely. See, I got Hollywood on here today, guys. I never thought that would happen. 
Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. And speaking of being a fan, something that the fans are going to love is this big project that you are working on, which is your autobiography. Can you tell us right. how that's going? Right. I have been talking about this um, forever. Um, it was almost ready to go uh, right before the pandemic. And then the pandemic stopped everything. Um, before the pandemic, I had asked Dan Murphy um, if he would be interested in writing the autobiography with me. And he said, I would be honored. And I had read some of the stuff that he had done and I loved his attitude toward all female wrestling, very neutral and very open. Um, and the thing that I also loved is he, his voice is a lot like mine. Um, if anybody's ever, even read uh, the Marilyn Manson book or the Jenna Jameson book, Neil Strauss is a, an author and he captures the voices of his, um, the people that he is uh, doing books for. Um, so Neil Strauss is a big fan. I'm a big fan of his. I'm also a huge fan of Jeff Patterson. Small chapters are, I, I don't want to say small, but chapters that are not long, like for me, if I start reading something and it goes on and on and on, I get a little bored. So short chapters, um, I'm hoping that we can incorporate into my book. But anyway, so so fast forward to now, uh, there's a big chunk of the book done already. So we're just nearing probably the ending. We're trying to get it done at the end of this month right now. So that way it'll be ready to go for 2023. And I'm super excited. Another thing is, you know, was I ready to write the book in 2007? No. Was I ready to write the book in 2018? No. Because look how many years have gone by and how much stuff that I could add to it. So I'm ready. I'm, I'm totally ready to, to release the book and super excited um, um, for you, Mike, to read it. You know what? I Yeah, I'm super excited because um, I think you're in there, by the way. I'm pretty sure you are. Oh, I would yeah. love that. That's exciting. Yes, I don't think you remember, but when I was asking some of the fans to write a paragraph or two, you're in there from way back in the day. Um, so you will um, see your name and some of the writings that you wrote about your remembering Glow and my character. So I'm super excited for you to see it. Awesome. I can't wait to read it. I'm sure it's going to be a great autobiography. We are going to love that, guys. I'm so excited for all the Glow fans to read this because I'm sure you got a lot of interesting stories to tell and a lot of memories. Well, and another thing, can I just say? Yep. I think I would give the book credibility doing the pilot and all four seasons. You know what I'm saying? I, I was there. I witnessed all of it. You, you can say what you say if you're in season three or four or just came in for a few matches here and there but you really don't know the whole truth unless you were there the whole time so i, I think uh, i am the perfect person to tell that story exactly because from from beginning to end how it started and how it ended you were there the whole time so yeah per perfect book to read and Thank another you. thing that is perfect is the guests who come on this show we have so many wonderful guests and i'm sure our special correspondent has found a guest for us now so let's check in and see who we've got it's lightning. I'm back. And I've been flying around looking for some new guests for the show. In the meantime, I want to talk about last year's guest, Nunuchka. She's back with a special message. In the meantime, she wants to know also where the heck is Tina and where the heck is Americana. She wants them to face her on the show. Colonel Nunuchka here with breaking news. Americana and Tina Ferrari will finally be appearing on the Michael Rand show. Does this bring you pleasure? Just proves one thing. You Americans believe anything you hear on social media. Of course, they're not coming to show. They are afraid of me. Aunt Kitty raised very strong women. Well, Stallone's sweethearts hide. How long does it take farmer's daughter to milk a cow? California doll, how long can she stay at the beach? There were four cheerleaders 
Do they really have to all hold up Susie's spirit on top of pyramid so she does not fall and break the other arm? Nanochka will be watching and I will keep you updated with progress, but don't hold your breath. You know, it's always great to see what Nanochka has to say. Don't you agree? I mean, she she's just great. Absolutely. And, and where is Americana and Tina Ferrari? I want to know, where are you guys? Come on, the challenge has been issued. <laughs> okay. And now what we're going to talk about is your soap line. You have been so busy and it's been such a success. Can you tell us what soaps you have for the holiday season and year round as well? Mike, such a great question because I love making soap and I've been doing it since before the pandemic. So I did a bunch of holiday soap before the holiday. Um, this one right here, right in front is called Holiday Berry. And um, by the way, everybody, all the soaps that I make all have the same recipes. So it's organic coconut oil, olive oil, shea butter, castor oil, and then the fragrance. Um, this fragrance right here is black raspberry vanilla. It's one, oh, so good. Love, love, love. Um, and again, I wanted to call this holiday berry, but I did tons of them. I did a peppermint bark. I did uh, Oh Christmas Tree. I did Winter Wonderland. Um, I also made like little, um, like little ornaments with the soap as well. So they're a little smaller and a couple little Santa Clauses as well. Can you see Santa Claus? There he is. He's a smaller one. Um, and so the one thing about this is when I get off the road and I say it all the time, but it's so true. Once you get done traveling and dealing with traffic and in and out and walking around and a flight that might be delayed, plus you have wrestling on top of it or the conventions on top of it. The last thing you want to do is do more. You just want to come home um, and chill. And so for me, that is making soap. So, and um, I love it just as much as you guys love, you know, and I just want to thank everybody who's purchased the soap. You guys are so awesome. Again, it's just, this is just like, it's just a little side gig, but it's something that I love doing and creating as well. Yep. And then also too, sometimes, you know, you do special soaps for charity as well, correct? Yeah, Mike, I do do special ones. Um, you know what, when uh, Ukraine was going, are still going through what they've been going through, I gave to UNICEF. For breast cancer, I've done Hair to Stay, uh, Gilda Radner's Club, the Breast Cancer Foundation. My mother is a cancer breast cancer survivor. Um, uh, the Ruth Ellis LGBTQ. So I like to pick and choose different charities. I mean, you got to remember those charity things started when we did um, the um, of oh, the game show, uh, uh, Family Feud. And remember, we got to pick charities then. And I did how many, Mike? Was it 10 or 15 you shows? You did 15. And I let me see. You did the oh. charities, um, it, what is it called? Ilixur? Ilisad or something. Ilisad. It, yeah, something like, yeah, something like that. Yeah. You did. Night was another one. Uh, Children of the Night. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yep, Children of the Night. Yes. Ozzy so. Osbourne had worked on that one as well. And then um, I think the Starlight, did you do the Starlight Foundation? Yes, I think so. I think those I were the three so. See, we have good memory here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> we we know the three charities. I love it. Yeah, and you guys, you guys got to look up those episodes because those Family Feud, I always, you know, they're they're funny. So go and see some of the crazy answers that were given on that show. Oh my gosh! You know what's funny is I would just come up not thinking, just talking out loud. Basically, is what was happening because I'll watch that and just go clink because I want to be the first one to hit it and like, uh oh. What am I going to say? So it wasn't thinking and then hitting the button, Mike. It was hit that button first and then figure it out later. And that is why you'll get the stupid remarks and some of the, but you know what? It was all in good fun and that money was going to charity. So um, it, it's all good. You know, it's yep. very good. Yeah. And now let's see with our special correspondent, if they found any guests. Okay, I found some guests, yay. But first, let me share one of my special Christmas memories. I used to work at a Christmas tree lot. And I mean, it was just fun. The music was playing in the background, music, Rudolph, everything over and over again. 
and the trees, the fresh cut trees, they just smelled so nice. And it was just uh, Christmas time, you know, like 24 seven in the lot. It just smelled so nice. That's one of my favorites. Now let's see what our guest favorites are. My favorite Christmas memory was when I was 10 years old. Uh, we got given a brand new bike for Christmas, myself and my brother. And my mum said, go outside and ride your bike. And we didn't know at that time, when we opened the front door, we had a white Christmas. And it is the only white Christmas this country has ever seen. And that was when I was 10 years old. And that was super, super magical. Christmas is my favorite holiday and my favorite season of the year. And I, I just want to say, when I was small, not well, I was never really small, but when I was younger, I remember taking things from the cabinets and wrapping them up, putting putting them under the tree. Uh, as a young girl, I probably was about seven uh, years old. So that was one of my favorite memories. But my fondest uh, season of the year and time of the year is winter and the Christmas season because everybody is so loving and giving and all the lights, you know, I'm real blingy and all of the lights that people put out. I want those to last all year. So remember out there in Facebook land or any other land, keep the lights up all year. God bless. Okay. Thanks for that update. And now remember last year we played password Hollywood well, it was so much fun, I decided to come up with another game of Christmas Password for you. So we're going to play the Super Password here. And the way that it works is I'm going to give you clues. I can give you up to four one-word clues. And once you answer, that's going to be a clue to an even bigger puzzle. So oh there's going to be five words to this big puzzle that you're going to try to solve. Okay. Okay, so the first clue I'm going to give you. Kids. Married with children. <laughs> Married. Okay. Kids and married. With. What is it? With. With. I said married. It's not married with children because that's three. So, so, so I, I said kids, married, with. So what's your guess? Kids, married, with. You, you said it. Children. Children, correct. First clue is children. Do you have an idea what the puzzle would be? Your only clue is children. I see. Okay, got it. All right, now I, I'm on board now. Children, this is about children. <sighs> Not sure. I mean, you need to, let's go to the second one. Okay, too, too early. Okay. Yeah. Inside. Okay. Next clue. Opposite. Okay, I still don't know it. Trees inside opposite trees. Mm. Are we talking about Christmas? No, Christmas trees inside. You could have, okay, inside opposite. I don't know. Oh, God. Um, one more clue. What's a good clue I can give you? Come on. Is it a first place thing? Streets. Did you say streets? I don't like. Oh, outside. Opposite of inside, outside. Oh, opposite. Well, you you just said opposite. I know, because that's all I can say. I'm only allowed to give you one word. Oh, gosh, you're making this hard. Okay, so it's outside. Outside, yep. so, so your two clues so now are children and outside. Is this a game? Outside, children playing hopscotch outside. Is it a game? No, children no. outside. Is it, uh, we already passed Halloween, it's not trick or treat, that's outside, yeah. children. 
Okay, so let's go to the third clue now. My goodness. Sombrero. Mexican food. <laughs> Mexico. Cap. Cap. What was it? Cap. C-A-P. Cap. Oh, Santa Claus. Santa Santa's. Claus has. What would you Cap. say? Santa Claus. I don't know. Santa Claus. Slay. Um, Santa, uh, let me see. Uh, you said outside children. So outside. I said so, so, no, no, no. So this is so so sombrero, tap, yes, hat, yeah, hat, 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 hat. Yeah. Okay. okay. So now your three clues are children outside and hat. Do you know what the puzzle could be? <laughs> if they were inside, I would call them a dunce's cap. Children in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> my demented mind all right children outside and a hat unless they're wearing a winter coat outside okay so we'll go to the fourth clue now my the fourth clue is going to be mcdonald's yum food french fries hamburger burger king Fast food restaurants, right? Drive throughs. Uh, fast. Uh, junior bacon cheeseburger. A what kind? Junior bacon cheeseburger. Carl's Jr. Is that what you're talking about? Junior bacon cheeseburger. I don't. I don't know. Um, I'm not a fan. And the last one, I'll say, girl. A children's happy meal at McDonald's. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, it was Wendy's. Wendy's. Oh, I don't go to Wendy's. Darn okay. it. Okay. So the... your clue. Perfect at Wendy's. I got it. Yes. Okay. Your clues are children, outside, hat, and Wendy's. Well, it seems like it's a windy day outside. We're using Wendy's. We're using children, a hat, and it's outside. What are these kids doing? Oh my <laughs> gosh, this is a tough one. Okay. Now yeah, this, this, this kids, last one. Is Wendy's, let me just ask you, is Wendy's like, is that something, it's not the word windy, but it's windy. Like it, It's uh, actually the, Wendy's. It's actually okay. the restaurant Wendy's is a clue. Wendy's. All right. Children outside Wendy's and hat and hat. I don't know. Okay, this this one is this is a tough clue. Oh boy, oh, I don't even know how I'm going to describe this clue. I may have to Google this. <laughs> I'm going to look Wendy's. What does Wendy's hat and children? So the next clue that I'm going to give you, hateful. The hateful eight. Sorry, that movie, hateful. Okay, I don't know. Go to another clue. Detestable. So, hateful. Loath loathsome. Loathsome. Is it a South Park character? Obnoxious. I know lots of those people. Oh, <laughs> okay. The word I was trying to get out of you was ab abominable. Oh, well, why don't you say like that cartoon? Ab yeah, that's a hard word to say. Say yeah. it again. Ab abominable. So your clue is now, if you can guess this puzzle. Children, outside, yeah. Yeah. hat, Wendy's, and abominable. And remember, the puzzle is something Christmas themed. Children, outside, hat, Wendy's, abominable. They're ice skating. It's cute, but they're not doing that, are they? Nope. Uh, I'll I'll give you one more chance to try to think of what it could be. And children are doing this. So so think really hard. Children oh, outside. Caroling outside. Children outside. Hat. Hat. 
Christmas Carol, it's cold. Wendy's and Abominable. Damn. Mike, you made this hard for me. This was a hard one this year. Yes, it was. Okay, I'm going to give you the answer. It's uh, Frosty the Snowman. Oh, gosh, Wendy's, of course. Wendy's Frosty. Frosty. That's why, unfortunately, I couldn't say because Frosty's at yeah. Wendy, Abominable Snowman. Yep, yep. Then the hat, children outside. Okay, so that was a tough one. That but you know tough. what's you know what's even it. tougher? Yeah, let's do more. <laughs> what's even tougher is something I asked you last year. And now uh, Hollywood better not get this wrong again, because she's had a whole year to memorize this. What are the rain here? Oh no! <laughs> Wait a minute. Reindeer. How many are there? Oh, then that's cheating if I tell you. No, I don't use that. I will say there are nine reindeer. Because who who's the obvious one? Deer. No cheating. I'm not going to cheat today. All right. Let's see. We know that there is Prancer, because I called out my kitty Prancer. Uh, is there... Uh, gosh... There's no ready and steady, right? Uh, how about Vixen? Right? Yeah. Rudolph. Rudolph. That's three. Is there Comet? Comet. Comet. Yeah, that's four. Cupid, Donner. Five, six. Blitzen. Seven. Two did I forget? Dasher. Eight. And I don't know. Uh, I said Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Bl uh, Blitzen, Donner, Dasher. I don't remember. Yes, I think you said them all. I think now you did. I think you've got it. But you know what? I don't know if our guests will be able to get it. So let's I go to our spe special correspondent and let's see because I asked to see if our guests can can do this this year. So let's see if we can find guests that can. Next up, we have some American gladiators and they're gonna tell us if they can name Santa's reindeer. It's gonna be fun. Uh, God, let me see if I can do it first. <laughs> okay, wait, of course we got Rudolph or does he even count half people does. Rudolph's not one of the reindeer. So we got Dancer, Prancer, Comet, Vixen, Cupid. I'm saying I'm totally out of order. We've got, I don't know the song. We've got Dasher and Dancer and Comet and Vixen or Cupid. It's like, I can't do it. Oh my God, it's been so long. I know that stupid song and I have not seen it in a long time. One of my favorites is uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Claymation or Stop Motion, whatever you want to call it. All right. Let's see what our guests have for you. So we've got Donner Dancer, Blitzen, Vixen, Comet, Rudolph. Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Don did I say Donner already? <laughs> um, Donner, Dasher, Cupid, Blitzen, Rudolph, um, that's about all I got. Um, did I say Dasher, Dancer, Comet, Blitzen, Vixen, Rudolph? Oh my God, is there any other left? Ah! I think that's all I got. Cupid, Comet, and of course, Rudolph. <laughs> that's it, that's all I got. <laughs> did I say Blitzen? Okay, there we go. Okay, awesome. Thanks for that update. And apparently it looks like they don't know their reindeer either. Oh boy, I hope we can find somebody that can that can name the reindeer. I don't know. Well, we'll check back in soon and see if we have another, another guest that can find out. But right now it is time for the lightning round. And since you've done this so many times and we did do a Christmas theme one last year, I'm gonna change this up a little bit for you. I'm going to okay. ask you to name your 
favorites. So you just give me the first thing that pops in your head, because I know this is difficult, but what is your favorite movie? Since it's Christmas, we're going to say It's a Wonderful Life. Favorite TV show? Since it's Christmas, we're going to say TV show. Oh gosh, you got me, Mike. For it's that's a movie I was thinking about. So the first thing that comes to mind for TV is oh, I can't do it because I don't watch TV shows. But I want to say I love Saved by the Bell because I was on it. Yep. Okay. Favorite book. A Christmas Carol. Favorite network or streaming service? Ooh, that's tough because there's a lot of them, but I watch a lot of stuff on Netflix. Favorite food? <sighs> is chocolate a food? Because Chocolate's I love food. Okay. And speak, since it is Christmas time, I'm going to ask you, what do you like to have on Christmas Day? Well... Traditionally, it should be turkey, but I am not a turkey fan at all. So on Christmas Day, I would love a homemade lasagna. Because I was what... gonna say that's we're what both we healthy. make. Mom makes lasagna now. Turkey, obviously, I love it for Thanksgiving, but for Christmas, we make lasagna. Exactly. Yeah. So you, I was gonna say Italian, and I know you knew that. Yeah. Now, when my when my aunt was alive, we would do homemade raviolis. Yeah. My, delicious. What is your favorite activity? Making soap. Who is your favorite musical artist? That's a lot. My favorite, especially growing up, uh, I loved the band Led Zeppelin. Do you have a favorite song? Mm. <sighs> when the Levee Breaks. Again, my generation, not yours. Favorite sport? Wrestling, of course. Favorite video game or game on your phone? Well, I have to say plumbers don't wear ties for now. Do you have a favorite city to visit? Ooh, I love New York City a lot. And your favorite restaurant? Um, any steak place, but I, I love Morton's very much i love the palm very much i am a steak person and a martini person so ooh, yum now let's check in with our special correspondent i'm back that was wonderful and i want to go back to the whole reindeer thing and everybody trying to name the reindeer i feel so much better that i'm not the only one that forgot certain reindeer so uh, up next will be Tiffany Mellon. And let's see if she can name the reindeer. And by the way, uh, you let Hollywood off the hook. She missed a reindeer, dang it. So I want you to give her help for that one. All right, let's see who can name them. Hmm, the reindeer? Let's see. Well, I know there's Rudolph and then there's Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen. But I think Beastie should be one of those two because she's kind of an animal. And maybe Stinky. Yeah. Yeah, can we add Beastie and Stinky in there? They'd make good reindeer. Okay, and as we close out one year, we are about to enter a new year. So Hollywood, can you tell us what you have in store for the new year? Do you have any events or anything, you know, going on that the fans can can go and visit you and see you at? Awesome. Good question. Um, 2023 is going to be super busy. Uh, February 5th, I'm going to be in Baltimore, and that is Celebrity Fest. So I'm super excited because I've not been to that one before. So that's February 6th in Baltimore, Celebrity Fest. After that, we roll into March. March will be uh, in Los Angeles. It is the end of March and it's WrestleCon, WrestleMania. And I'll be signing at the Biltmore Hotel. So I'm super excited because I have not done that. So I'll be there. 
Then we go to Rock and Pod in Nashville, Tennessee, which they've had several years, and I um, was extremely honored to to uh, sign for that. So that's in uh, April, and then I'm going back to Indiana again uh, to do another Russell Con over there. So though that's one, two, three, that's four up until April. I don't know what we have in May yet, but then I'm going to go to um, to Europe in June or July, I'll be headed to Paris. And I haven't been there for a while, so I'm super excited to do that. So I'm gonna stay busy. And I just wanna thank all the promoters. Um, you guys rock. Thank you for asking me. I'm always uh, honored to be there and sign and meet all of our fans. You guys are the best. And by the time this comes out, this book should be at the table, my autobiography, Glow, the original. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. I'm super excited. You know what? That that is a Christmas present everyone should have next year, guys. So yeah. make sure you buy that book. And you know, after I read this book, we're gonna have you back on here, Hollywood, and we're gonna talk about the book. We're gonna promote the book on here, of course. So it'll be super exciting. So thank you guys for watching today. Thank you to all the guests who stopped by, our special correspondent, everybody. So Hollywood, can you tell the fans how they can contact you? Absolutely. First of all, Mike, thank you for having me. I love coming on the show. And I, it's like once a year I come on, so not too much. But if you guys are interested in following me, uh, Twitter is Official Glow Hollywood. At Instagram, it's Glow Hollywood. There is a YouTube channel, Hollywood Glow. It's either one of those. There's a Facebook as well. If you're interested in any of the soap, it's Hollywood Botanica with a K. There's an Instagram site as well for that. So thank you all for being here and stopping by and visiting. Happy. Okay. Year. And thank you guys for watching. Thank you again, Hollywood. And we will talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody. Oh, and be sure to follow me. I always forget to say this. Follow me on YouTube at official Mike Rand. We have screen handles now as well. And it's youtube.com slash the Mike Rand and youtube.com slash at official Mike Rand. Facebook at official Mike Rand. Twitter at Mike Rand com. Instagram official Mike Rand. So I always forget to say that, but guys, follow me. That's a lot of information. Or just go, just go to MikeRand.com and look at them all. All right. Thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody. Merry Christmas. This. Let's just get it all out of the way, the paid portion of the program. This is one of a kind. That, one more. We'll get this in and I think we've got everybody covered. Hold on, wait, you did I gotta stop you because you wanted one thing. I got a surprise for you. Okay. Three, two. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rand Mike. You know what? Thank God we're not live, right? Of course we're live. We'll do it again. Start that again. I need a producer or something here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mike Rand and these exciting exclusive interviews you won't find anywhere else. Thank you for having me, Mike. It's an honor. I know that a lot of the women of wrestling and the ladies that have been involved in professional wrestling have come on and and they've told me that, oh, you've got to chat with Mike. Mike's one of the biggest uh, WOW fans and GLOW fans and, and just wrestling in general fans that there is. I said, oh, you don't know how many inbox messages. I turn these things down all the time. I'm not really into putting myself over, I'd rather put the talent over. But when demanding Lana Starr says, Dan, do it, damn it, I do it.
So one of my favorite moments with Ursula was the time that we house sat and we were house sitting for a lawyer who lived up in the Hollywood Hills. We were getting ready to go down to the rainbow that night and um, he said that we could eat or drink whatever we wanted in the refrigerator. So we saw a bunch of bottles of wine, small bottles, big bottles, and uh, we went for the small bottle of wine. Um, we drank that whole thing up and later on he told Ursula, you guys drank the most expensive bottle of wine in that fridge and we got a huge laugh out of it. Of course, we went for the most expensive bottle of wine because we're Hollywood and babe.